we have some questions about vulvodynia and vaginismus. And actually these questions are, can it cause bladder spasms? Can it cause constipation? How do these things interplay? So oh, um, I'll, I'll tell it from my point of view, and then obviously um, perhaps you guys as physiatrists can weigh in as well. So I would say that 70% of my patients who walk into my office tell me I have urinary frequency, I pee all the time, I feel like my bladder doesn't really empty, I'm constipated, I push or stain, start a stream, I have IC. And I'm like, okay. And, and so we examine, I do the exam, examination, and you find that they might have IC. I mean, you're not going to diagnose that via first exam, but they actually have trigger points in their pelvic floor. Now, how is that related to their bladder-based symptoms? Well, their bladder is contracting, their pelvic floor is not relaxing, they're not completely emptying, they're leaving a little bit of urine in their bladder, and they got to go, and they got to go, and they got to go. And so, so, and then that often gets misinterpreted for, I definitely have IC. I mean, you may have IC, and we had, we'd have to go down that road, but if you don't treat the pelvic floor, treating the bladder is not going to really get that person to 100% better. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's really how all of these symptoms can kind of play a role together. And then you look at patients who have vulvodynia or vestibulodynia, um, and that, you know, is pain. And I'm just going to say it pretty colloquially that's pain in the vagina okay and so you can have pain in the vagina that's provoked so when you sit for long periods of time if you try to wear a tampon or have penetrative intercourse or you can have generalized pain you can just have pain all the time and so what's a reflexive response to that often what do patients do See, if people clench their jaw when they're stressed or when they're in pain, you clench your pelvic floor too. And so now we, again, have two things going on. So we can treat the vagina, treat the vagina, treat the vagina. But if we don't treat the pelvic floor at the same time, you're again, not going to get that 100% relief. So I think just understanding how all these things work together. And if you look at all the, all of these things kind of as a cohort, there's there's different causes, right? So when we look at vestibulodynia, we say, is it neuroproliferative? Meaning, is there just a lot of nerves firing there? Is it inflammatory? Is there is there some type of vulvar dermatosis we're missing? Is it hormonal? So, you know, kind of looking at the different causes of things to tease it out is really helpful to make sure that, you know, treating that root cause so that you can get that relief. I also think it's so important too, like to address all constipation or any loose stool that patients are having. Um, I feel like the GI system, there's, oh, there's usually an underlying GI disorder with the patients as well. And if there's chronic straining or there's chronic loose stool, your stool consistency is off even just a tiny bit. If you're straining just a tiny bit or your position on the toilet isn't perfect, there can be just tr causing trigger points in the pelvic floor as well. And I, I find that it really can flare a lot of vulvodynia patients either way. So really, really, really addressing and peeling through your GI system because a lot of patients sometimes when you ask uh, and with anyone right we're not taught what normal bowels are and and how to properly um, bear down on the toilet so I think really 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 teasing into that and finding out what you're doing on the toilet makes a big makes a big difference too one approach that I used to th for this is just to sort of hear the story and see what pieces fit together with the story if they're having constipation, if they're having IC type symptoms and there's some pelvic floor, floor like hyperesthesia, increased sensitivity in the pelvic floor, all those things fit together for me in one way. And that's the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system in this part of the body is easily triggered. It's easily maintained. It may be one little thing that's maintaining it, but then everything else in that distribution is sensitized. Uh, and, and trying to identify these patterns can sometimes also give a, a course for treatment whether it's blocking and resetting the nerves or trying to tease out what that actual primary source is. I think you guys mentioned vaginismus also. So in vaginismus, I don't really see a ton of all of the symptoms related. For vaginismus, it's mostly sexual for a lot of patients. And that's because in primary vaginismus, it's like the first time they've ever had anything enter the, the vagina whether it's a tampon or a penis or um, a finger. And the muscles tend to clench up right before. Most of my patients who have pure vaginismus and not, you know, with the presentation of pelvic floor dysfunction, they're not necessarily having vaginal burning 
in the vulvodynia or vestibulodynia picture. Um, so two separate things and knowing the difference um, really can help when you're listening to a patient's symptoms. Um, usually those ones may have some trauma associated with their past or um, psychological issues with, you know, upbringing. Um, and then there's the secondary vaginismus, which can happen later on in life. And a lot of times there is something um, that causes this to now present later in life. So a little bit different than the vestibulodynia or vulvodynia picture.